It's not like modern Land Rover products with bells and whistles, automatic gearboxes, hill descent control, nothing like that. This is a fully analog manual beast. Hey guys, hey campers. I hope you got your sense of humor with you because this one is about a Land Rover Defender and we all know what that means. Once upon a time when someone said Land Rover, this was what came to mind. For nearly a quarter of a century, the name has been a byword. The world's most versatile vehicle. Rugged, made for hard work. This is Land Rover. Engineered to withstand the toughest stress and strain, this is the vehicle that takes you where other wheeled vehicles dare not go. Think of the toughest off-road journey you can imagine anywhere in the world and chances are the Defender has tackled it. Defender has a hard-won reputation for being able to cope with the harshest off-road terrain. The Land Rover Defender. A car that needs no introduction because it's been around for almost ever. It's also a car that's very dead. The last Defender rolled off the production line in 2016. What does the inner city and the CBD have to do with an off-road warrior like the Land Rover Defender? Absolutely nothing. The Land Rover Defender is a modern icon. It's a legend and its roots trace back to its original release in the late 1940s. But it's absolutely awful on-road. And that's why we're here. Now you might think I'm being a little bit harsh saying that the Defender's awful on-road, but let's run through a few of the reasons that it is. And believe me, there are plenty. Now, first of all, the seating position. Absolutely horrendous. I can't get any further away from the dashboard than this. My knees are hitting the plastic. I'm only just far enough away from the steering wheel. Not perfect at all. Now, you're gonna need a raincoat if you own a Defender. Why? Well, because you can't actually drive with the window up because you can't get your arm to a point where it works with the steering wheel. Window needs to be down. But Land Rover hasn't overlooked that fact and they've actually given you heated seats so you can drive with the window down even in winter. These, do you remember these? Removable faceplate CD players? They were modern in 1993, but you still get one with your Land Rover Defender. It's absolutely amazing how this has such a close link to the past while still being available currently. And perhaps the most fun part about this particular Defender, it's got optional third row seating back there, so you can torture extra people if you want to stick them right in the back. First of all, how do you recognize a Defender driver? Is it the designer shirt, the logos, the funny t-shirts about off-roading? Is it the designer belt? Is it the cap or the hat or the jacket with Land Rover written on it? No, it could be one of those, but the best way to see it is to look over here or over here. Right in here is a big hole, or if you're living in England, it's on this side. And I'll tell you why that is. Come over here. This is a lovely little design feature from Land Rover, because while you're standing stationary and the engine's turning, if you had a traffic light or a stop sign, would you believe the side mirror is actually vibrating with the, with the engine? So you can't really see anything, it's all blurred. But that's okay, because the inside mirror is perfectly stable. Now when you're driving along on the highway, would you believe the side mirrors are perfectly stable in the wind, which is, gives you a perfect rear view. But the middle mirror is actually vibrating along with the mirror. So it's very cleverly done by Land Rover. I don't know how they've done it, but it's a very good feature. I'm sure you all know this. You have to slam the door twice before it closes, maybe three times even, finally. But in the end, you finally get the hang of it where you need to give it a bit of a slam and it stays closed. This little one in the middle is the most important one. This is the uh, temperature meter. And the reason I say that is because in a normal car, when the engine is up to temperature, the needle gets to the middle and it stays there. And you, it doesn't move. Not in a Land Rover. If you're on a long hill, this thing will move all the way to the red and you'll be sweating and you're wondering, are we gonna make it? And then as you crest the hill and go down the other side, it comes back again. So this actually proves that the gauge is working, which is a good thing to know. Tires, 
Look after your tires. Do you know why? They're expensive, that's why. Very big tires. What about the shoes? What kind of shoes do you wear driving Land Rover? You might think you wear boots because you're in the mud and you need to be tough, right? You might think tackies, it's a lot easier. Some neat shoes, no. In fact, if you look outside and it's raining, flip-flops. These are your best friend in the rain if you own an older model, older than a Puma. If you old, own an old TDI, it's flip-flops. And I'll tell you why. These lovely flaps, these are great for in the summer. Gives you a lot of airflow. In the rain, it's a nightmare. You wouldn't believe how much rain comes in through those flaps as you're driving along. Because the water just streams down right through the instrument gauges and fills up there. In fact, Land Rover have thoughtfully provided a little floor mat with a little lip on it, which keeps all the water in it. And it gives you a good rain gauge. And if that's full up, that's about 50 mils of rain, so it's a good rain gauge. And that's also why they call it a foot well. Then there's the doors. They never stay open. This is the reason we park on a bit of a slope. So it keeps the door open while you're loading your car. This is a telltale sign. Listen to this. You hear that? That is a fully functioning door open holder thing. You hear that? Let's say you forgot to bring your watch along. You're wondering what time it is. It's not that hard in a Land Rover because at a certain time of day, 11 a.m. or 3 p.m. for about half an hour, the reflection of the sun off the windscreen will shine onto anything in your path. Certain time of day, certain drive, certain way you're driving, the sun's right here. It's right, it's burning your cheek, it's burning your forehead, and you want to really move the sun visor over here. But you're not going to be able to do that, are you? Thanks, Land Rover. You might be wondering why Defender drivers don't listen to the radio much. It's because the radio is garbage. There's no sound coming out of there. It sounds tinny. You can actually hear yourself think louder than the radio sound. But that's why we listen to the engine, because it just sounds so cool. So you don't really need to buy this car uh, if you want to have a quiet ride with no uh, noise or a minimum amount of noise, because that is not a Defender. It makes a lot of noise. In any other car, it'd be totally bad. It would be totally unacceptable. But in this, it's just part and parcel of a 70-year-old car. So we've pointed the Defender now at our favorite off-road track, and absolutely everything that doesn't make any sense on-road, all of a sudden makes perfect sense once you get off-road. You've got super deep, low-range gearing. You've got incredible traction, usually. You've got a center diff lock that you can use in low or high range, and the slow steering, the gentle throttle, the heavy clutch, it all makes incredible sense off road because you actually need really subtle inputs in the rough stuff to make sure that you don't lose momentum or end up somewhere that you shouldn't. While the Defender's not great on road, it's absolutely unbelievable when the going gets tough. It's just mind-blowing how easy the Defender makes this stuff look. I just love the whole attitude about this car. Now, Land Rover could have said, well, for our 70th birthday, we're gonna show how environmentally friendly and how technologically advanced we could make the Defender. But they said, nah. This is a 1997 Land Rover Defender. It is one of the few modern automobiles that has increased in value since it came out. And today, we're going to find out why. Well, it isn't performance, I'll tell you that. So you're thinking that maybe it had a lot of torque. Nah. It certainly wasn't features. There's this nifty sliding window that you can open in front or in back. <laughs> so here's what we've learned about the Defender. It's slow, it's uncomfortable, it's unreliable. It has virtually no equipment. It's 20 years old and it costs more than my Aston Martin. So how does it justify its price? Because it's so cool. Just look at this thing. It's a Land Rover Jeep. You know who owns a Jeep Wrangler? Normal people. People who leave their dealership license plate frame on. 
People who live in an apartment complex with spaces for future resident parking. People who get in fights with strangers about Android versus iPhone. But you know who owns a Defender? Cool people! Having a Defender is like the ultimate SUV trump card. You have a Defender and a guy in a Jeep comes up to you and you're like, oh, yeah. That's going to give us the ultimate drop in the water. Right. So we hold that speed. There's your bike. As impressive as the Defender is at taking on deep water, it isn't exactly 100% waterproof. But hey, nobody's perfect. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of water coming in. No, there's not. <laughs> no, there's not. Yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> High five! <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. First time. <laughs> How was that? The Defender might be the most simple of all the Land Rover products. It might have the least bells and whistles. It might not have all the electronic trickery that you can get in a Range Rover or even a Discovery. But there's enough capability in this car to get you out of almost any difficulty. This is a powerhouse that can still get the job done. And it's incredibly fun because it's you doing it. It's, there's no electronic trickery, it's mechanical. It's you, knowledge of what you're doing, and physics. And a lot of mud. What more do you want? Now the Land Rover Defender, it's a vehicle from another era and its days are numbered, we know that. It simply can't exist in a modern market where buyers expect comfort and safety in equal measure. We can criticise its shortfalls, but we should rejoice in the fact that the Defender exists while it still does. It's one of the modern greats, it's an all-time classic, it's one of the best off-road vehicles that's ever been designed. And if you live in the city and you own a Land Rover Defender, that's what it should look like. You might be having a really bad day, you got out of bed on the wrong side, a tough day at work, people are not in a good mood, you're feeling grumpy, you're driving along, and suddenly another Defender driver waves at you. You don't even know this guy. Suddenly your whole day changes. Suddenly things are good again. So why do we love this iconic shape so much? It's big, it's blocky, it's very tall, it's taller than I am. What is up with that? I'll tell you why. If you parked in a big parking lot, you could find your car. Everybody else will be looking for where did I park my car, but a Land Rover? Oh, there it is, I got it. There's no bigger discussion point than a Defender, whatever the case. And we love this car for all its faults. We celebrate the faults, actually. Can't help but put a massive, great big smile on your face. Defender people, they don't really care what you think.